Hello everyone, this is Shati78 for the Rough Cuts on Sunday. I hope you all had an awesome week. Today I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite movies. I know I say that like almost every week, but this one really, really is. I've seen it, I don't know how many times. It's embarrassing the number of times I've seen this. A Place in the Sun. This was directed by George Stevens in 1951. And it stars Elizabeth Taylor. I love her. Actually, Elizabeth Taylor, she is the only person I ever wrote a fan letter to. And I got a reply. I'd like to say that I did get a reply. Montgomery Clift and also Shelley Winters. Some background on this movie. In 1906, there was a very scandalous murder case that occurred in upstate New York involving a young man, Chester Gillette, who had a pregnant girlfriend by the name of Grace Brown, and he took her out on a boat and he murdered her pretty brutally. From that incident in, I think it was 1925, there was a play written called An American Tragedy. I think it was Patrick Kearney who wrote the play. And then also based on that incident, um, Theodore Dresden, he wrote a book called An American Tragedy. This brings us up to 1931, when I think it was MGM, they did a film based on that starring Sylvia Sidney and Francis D, also with the same title. Incredibly forgettable movie, wasn't that great, didn't do well at the box office at all. So there was a kind of a stigma that followed it. And then in 1949, George Stevens went to Paramount. He said he wanted to do the film version again of An American Tragedy. They refused. He had to sue the studio to allow him to do it. Saying He was saying that they were preventing him from working. Then studio gave in and he did the movie. It was his associate producer, Ivan Moffat, who came up with the title, A Place in the Sun. And it's a great title for what this story is. You have George Eastman. I still laugh at that name because all of this is set in upstate New York. And those of you who are also from upstate New York, especially around the Rochester area, know that basically there are two companies up there and that Xerox and Kodak started by George Eastman. However, they both came from poor backgrounds and then wanted to work themselves up. George Eastman, the real one, Kodak guy, he did. I don't believe he was ever a part of any sort of murder. But this George Eastman, his he was poor, just got back from the army, and his uncle gave him a job in a factory. Factory produces Eastman like lingerie, also swimming suits for women. In this factory, he meets... Alice, and then Alice Tripp, she's played by Shelley Winters in this movie, which is also kind of funny because at the time, Shelley Winters was a sex symbol. Some of you might find that very hard to believe, but she was quite glamorous prior to this. And in fact, she and Marilyn Monroe were once roommates and she taught Marilyn how to act sexy. And you'll notice this in almost all of her photographs where she kind of tilts her head back and like does that sort of come hither smile. That's Shelley Winters teaching her. So all of that, Shelley Winters. And this, she's very, very dowdy. She wasn't a first choice at all. In fact, she had to convince George Stevens to even give her a screen test by, she just basically, she dyed her hair brown, just mousy brown, and put on very dowdy clothes, the kind that a factory worker would wear at the time. And that's what got her consideration and then ultimately the role. And she was actually nominated for an Oscar for this part. Elizabeth Taylor, 17 at the time when she was cast for this, and then she you know, turned 18 during the filming, gorgeous in this. This was her first serious role. And in fact, this is the role that was really pivotal in her career because prior to working with Montgomery Clift, as she once stated in an interview, all of her leading men before this were dogs and horses. So this was her first leading man, Montgomery Clift, a very, very intense method actor. This is when she realized that it's not just go here, smile, say a line, go over here, look for your light, watch for your cue, that there really was an art to this. And she started taking acting much more seriously after this role. And she gives a tremendous performance in this movie. Montgomery Clift, very handsome, very intense actor. You can really, really see the chemistry 
between Elizabeth Taylor and Montgomery Clift in this role. What happens is you have poor factory worker, he falls for other poor factory worker. They have a thing which is against company rules when co-workers are not supposed to fraternize with each other. Then he sees Elizabeth Taylor. He falls for her immediately. You know, she's the most beautiful debutante around town. She's very taken with him as well. A romance starts, but at the same time, this is also very controversial, he impregnates his girlfriend, Alice. It just kind of goes downhill from there. He's in love with Angela Vickers, but he's got this problem looming over him. He resolves that, has a tragic outcome, but you kind of want it. And this is where it differs from the book, also the play and the actual incident. In the book, George Eastman's character isn't really a likable guy, but in this they make him much, much more sympathetic. The scene that's in the boat has been parodied thousands of times, and you just kind of want to kick Shelley Winters over, telling him what kind of a life they're going to have together, and how you're going to have to scrimp and save, they're not going to have much. And you, you don't really feel bad for her and what happens, but it's overall, it's a very, very moving story. For some people, um, they consider this one of their favorite film noirs. I'm kind of on the fence. I can see how it can be considered film noir, but I also can see how there's no way you, you would call this film noir. But it is, it's very, very dark. There's always a very ominous tone playing throughout this movie. And it's just overall, it's done really, really well. The attention to detail is amazing. Ultimately, this movie was nominated for nine Oscars. It won six. Won for Best Director for George Stevens. Also, Edith Head, love her, who did the costumes for this movie. She won for Best Costume Designer. And the gowns that she de designed for Elizabeth Taylor in this, they became just top fashion for the year. This is a wonderful movie. I highly recommend everyone to see it. It's very tragic. It's just, it's one of the most deliciously, beautifully tragic movies you could ever imagine seeing. The kiss, which is echoed often throughout this movie between Montgomery Cliss and Elizabeth Taylor, you can really see the intensity and the passion between the two of them. And in fact, Elizabeth Taylor, only two weeks prior to this movie, had her first kiss in real life. So, as she once put it, this kiss and this with Montgomery Cliff is much more exciting and probably much more passionate, too, than her actual one. This will also be playing on Turner Classic Movies tomorrow night, Monday, at the start of their primetime lineup. So definitely go ahead and check it out if you have Turner Classic Movies. If not, then you should buy the DVD, rent it. It's a great, great movie. Everyone should see it at some point in time. I hope you have a great week, stay warm, and I will see you next time. Bye.